Are you guys ready to look better or move better? What? That's right, dude. They're two different things? They can be. Uh, so we're gonna talk about movement versus muscle. Just had to flex on camera. <laughs> So this is actually a little bit of a debate, right? Uh, on the muscle side, these are people who say that when you're doing a particular exercise with resistance, to really focus on the target muscle that you're working. So for example, if I'm doing a bench press and I'm trying to work my chest, I really wanna focus on the chest lifting the bar, squeezing, the, the, you know, squeezing together and stretching at the bottom. Now movement people say, don't do that. Just perfect the bench press, perfect your positioning, get your, your efficient movement, and really move as much weight as you possibly can. Which one is better? Well, I think deciding which, which, your, which, uh, which is your goal is what's most important. So I think they both have their place, and this is an actual uh, debate that we just recently kind of had. It was, I don't know if it was a debate, it was a discussion that we had uh, with IFBB pro Ben Pakolsky, and I tend to side with him a little bit on this because I'm very aesthetic driven, being a men's physique pro and caring about how I look on stage, uh, how I train reflects that. And when I train or work out with like someone like my co-host, Justin, who's way more driven on the functional or the movement side, we both would do a bench press, uh, but if you were an outsider looking in and paying attention, to it, it almost looks like a different exercise mm -hmm. the way I train it and the way Justin trains it. It doesn't mean I'm right, he's wrong, or he's right, I'm wrong. We have different goals. So I think understanding what your desired outcome from the movement is first and foremost, right? That's, that's very important, and it's also important to note that they both have their benefits and they both have their detriments. Um, and they'll be both benefit everybody. So let's cover some of the benefits of each technique or way of training. So with the muscle side, it's great for aesthetics because when I'm isolating muscles and really focusing on targeted areas, I can really sculpt my body in a very targeted way. Well, let me give an example of that too. So let's take an example of how the focusing on the muscle side or aesthetics with that, let's take a, a muscle like the shoulder. Okay, the shoulder's broken up in three major parts, like the front, the side, and the rear deltoid. Now, a lot of times I'll train a very specific small movement like a rear delt fly, and I'm targeting this small part of my shoulder versus doing maybe an exercise like a shoulder press where all the shoulder's really incorporated. Now, I'm probably gonna get more growth, more bang for my buck in doing an overhead press, but if I'm trying to shape or sculpt my body and I have smaller rear delts in, in comparison to the front of my deltoids, I'm gonna do specific exercises like that isolation movement to try and sculpt it. Not only that, but the way you may do an overhead press would change, right? Because if I'm focused on movement, again, it's about maximizing you know, the biomechanics of the movement, the efficiency, pressing the weight up, moving the weight. Whereas the muscle, I don't even care so much about the weight or the, or the movement as far as I'm just trying to feel the targeted area. Now, another positive or benefit of just focusing on the muscle is it's actually corrective. Now, as a personal trainer, uh, I trained very little bodybuilders and I trained a lot more everyday people who just needed to correct imbalances and feel better. And that's just because there's not as many bodybuilders as there are average people. Now, many times I've had, I'd have average people do an exercise and they just wouldn't feel uh, certain muscles. Like we do a squat and they wouldn't feel their hips firing. Well, in that case, I would have them focus on squeezing their hips or their glutes to get connection to that muscle so that later on we can do well, movement. Well, let's talk about, let's stay with the shoulder analogy that I gave already so we can keep it simple. From a corrective standpoint, training this way, we're gonna stay right with the rear delts again. So let's say I get a client, which is very, very common for them to have what's called upper cross syndrome, which is the rounding of the shoulders and the forward head. A lot of times what ends up happening is you have somebody who has overdeveloped front shoulders because they're doing everything in front of them and they have underdeveloped rear delts. So doing an exercise like a rear delt fly is going to help take them back into good posture. So that might be an example of how I would do a specific shoulder exercise for corrective purposes for someone that has rounded shoulders and I might avoid the overhead press because they might just, that might just fall right into their imbalance. Now the reason worse. why you'd want them to focus on the muscle in that particular movement is because if they have a poor recruitment pattern, they can try doing the movement and they're not using the target muscle as much as you want them to because they don't have a good connection to it. So 
training in this way really helps you get connected to the muscles. In fact, bodybuilders are easily, I, I, the best that I can think of, at isolating and connecting to individual muscles. However, from a functional standpoint, the body doesn't work this way, right? I don't, my muscles don't work in isolation. They all work together. So for performance benefits, that's where this has some detriment and where you want to focus on working on just the movement. Movement, uh, movement-based exercises are, tend to be gross motor movement, uh, meaning lots, you know, all, all big parts of your body moving, more than one joint. So if I'm doing a barbell squat, if I'm doing a pull-up, if I'm doing a dip, if I'm doing an overhead press, I tend to want to perfect the movement, and it's very functional from an athletic standpoint and from just an everyday standpoint. Well, let's talk about what you, in more detail, what you mean by functional. So, and where this wouldn't apply to somebody who is more aesthetically driven. So a squat, like you said. Yes. If I'm trying to build aesthetics, and let's say it's my butt I'm trying to build, since that's a big popular one for men and women, that they're trying to build their glutes. So when they do the squat, they're slowing the movement down. When they get to the bottom of the squat, they're really focusing on activating and squeezing the glutes as they come up. Totally fine, there's nothing wrong with that. That's great, you're trying to develop that area. Now, doing it functionally and thinking more like, now when you squat down to pick up a couch or pick a rock up or pick your child up, you don't squat down with thinking, I need to squeeze my glutes right. and, and come back up. You wanna perform the movement as, and be as strong as you possibly can so you don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. So that is the difference, is you're trying to get your entire body to work and speak to, to each other, all the muscles speak to each other as you perform that squat versus trying to isolate a part of the body while you perform a movement. Exactly, so. and uh, a lot of people are aesthetic driven. Most of you watching are probably watching these videos because you want to look better uh, more than anything and performance is kind of a, a side effect. The truth is if you, if you focus on both of these, you're going to do better than if you just focus on one or the other. It's a good idea to do a little bit of all of it. Even if you're an athlete and all you ever want to do is get functional movement, sometimes it's a good idea to focus on the muscle. And on the verse, on vice versa, if you're just aesthetic driven, it is a good idea sometimes to perfect movements to get stronger at these big gross motor movements, which you got there. So I, this makes me think of this too. Oh, the feel, tempos, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like to give people an example of when you see this in programming, uh, Typically, if someone's more muscle hypertrophy based, uh, you're gonna see like a four, two, two, right? Four seconds on the eccentric, two at the isolation or the pause of the, the rep, and then two seconds on the way up. So that means four seconds down, yep. two at the bottom, two up. Yeah, so okay. this person's a total eight seconds to get through an entire, so if we used a squat, it would take them a total eight seconds to get all the way to the bottom, all the way back up to the top of the repetition. So really slow and controlled, trying to isolate certain muscles, focusing on certain muscles we're trying to activate and work. Then you go over to like a more functional performance, power-based type of a program, you tend to see a one, 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 very explosive. Mm -hmm. So it's down and up as fast and as hard as you possibly can, mm -hmm. getting that central nervous system to fire. Now, now it's not exclusive. No, you can do, you can use this tempo with, you know, if you're just focusing on movement. This tempo probably won't lend itself well, um, however, to muscle-based type training. But again, use all of this. And uh, one thing I'd like to also explain is that some exercises really lend themselves well to focusing on movement, and other exercises just lend themselves well to really focusing on the muscle. A good rule of thumb is if it's a single joint movement, it probably lends itself well to really isolating a muscle. If it's a multi-joint movement, you can focus on particular muscles, but it's also very good to focus on the movement. An example of that would be like seeing somebody who's doing explosive bicep curls. Yeah. It's, that's a single joint movement like Sal's talking about. You're not gonna get that much bang for your buck by swinging a bicep curl up. In fact, if you swing a bicep curl up explosively, you're probably gonna get a lot of lats and shoulders and chest, all kinds of other muscles starting to fire to help that out, which is not gonna help building your biceps very much versus doing an exercise like a squat or a deadlift where everything has to speak to each other to perform that movement, there's a, a lot more. Right, and you'll probably get more benefit from a deadlift by perfecting the deadlift than you will by trying to isolate like your lats when you do the deadlift. So know which movements work best which each, with each category, which exercises I should say, whether it's a movement-based one or a muscle-based one. Look at what your goals are and also 
Where do you always train? If you're always over here, you're probably going to benefit from moving over here and vice versa. So the body does very, very well with uh, variety. So the answer to this age-old debate, should you really focus on the muscle or should you focus on the movements? The answer is both. Both. Do both. Check it out. We post a new video every single day. Subscribe to this channel. Also, check out our podcast, Mind Pump, on iTunes.